Let's dive into the real deal of cooking. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna reveal six game-changing tips that I, as a professional chef, swear by. This isn't about fancy gadgets or unattainable skills. It's about practical, impactful techniques that will seriously upgrade your cooking. Whether you're making a simple Tuesday night dinner or hosting a grand feast, these tips will give you that pro chef edge. Get ready to master the art of cooking with ease and confidence. Let's get started. Okay, tip number one is to set up your prep station. I'm gonna show you how to set up a basic or general prep station uh, for veggies, which is honestly perfect for home cooks. So the first thing we wanna do is get something to stabilize our cutting board. That can either be a wet rag, or I have this, I forget what this is called, but hold my cutting board in place. Now here we have our cutting board, a big stable one. Next we want a scrap bowl for all the ingredients we prep. Then I have a wet towel here that I'll place right here, which will be helpful for sanitation, wiping down the board or wiping off the knife. Now I have a dry towel that I'll place on the right hand side. And here we can place our chef's knife, paring or utility knife, a veggie peeler, and a bench scraper if you have it, which is super helpful for picking up ingredients. Then we like to put it on the dry towel here so it doesn't slip around and kind of keeps it protected from a hard surface. And depending on how big your cutting board is, you can also place it here if you want. As long as you have some space and it doesn't kind of clutter up where you're prepping the ingredients. But we'll keep it here for now. And then lastly, we want an area where we can put our prepped ingredients that we've chopped up already. You can either use deli cups with some lids, or you can put a plate or a container to hold your prepped ingredients. So just for example, let's do some carrots. So what's great about this setup is it keeps you nice and organized and very clean. So if you have your scraps bowl, instead of getting your cutting board dirty, you can peel right into it. Just do that. So for example, I'm chopping up his carrots. Let's do some coins. Then I can just easily scoop it right up and place it into a container. And we are good to go. Super simple. Okay, so tip number two is to read the entire recipe. So I have the recipe here digitally. You can either print it out or have it on your computer or your phone. This first tip is about reading the entire recipe and I call this mental mise en place. So here we have the recipe. We can look at the ingredients. We got some onion, potato, garlic, olive oil, beef for this kima curry recipe. So I have the ingredients here and have an idea of all the things I'm gonna cook with. And then look at the instructions, all of it, before you start any cooking. So here I see a 12 inch nonstick pan. So I know a sense of what equipment I need. Kind of the steps, so I'm gonna saute the potatoes, the aromatics, and then transfer the veggies out of the bowl. So I can see that this is the first component here. And then return the pan to heat, cook the beef, add some spices. So that's kind of the second component. Return the cooked potatoes and onions to the beef pan, combined with added coconut milk and water. So you can see that there's kind of three components here and the different steps involved. And the reason why you wanna read the entire recipe before you start any cooking is so that you can have some foresight and memory of what to look forward to. That way, for example, say your recipe called for boiling some water or preheating the oven beforehand, so you don't miss crucial steps to be more efficient. So yes, mental mise en place. Know what to expect throughout the entire recipe will save you lots of time and stress. Okay, so tip number three is to gather all your ingredients and your equipment for the recipe. So this is really important to make sure you grab everything that you need for the recipe to make sure that you do have it and that it's all ready in one place so you're not scrambling around the kitchen trying to chase different things. So taking a closer look at our recipe, we got onion, potato, garlic. So one thing I wanna stress is when you run to the different areas of your kitchen to grab these ingredients, you wanna minimize the amount of times you run to that certain area. So that means grab everything that you need from that area. So for example, white onion, only have a red onion here, some potato, garlic. If your hands get full, it's totally fine. So I'm gonna put this back down over here. 
And I know that I have my tomato paste and coconut milk here as well. So I will grab all of that stuff. And if you know that you have other ingredients uh, in certain places and you don't need it right now, such as my olive oil and salt, which I know is near the stove, that is totally fine. So ground beef, peas, and spinach. So we'll go to the cold, go to your fridge and your freezer. So here I'm gonna grab the ground beef. And you see that I'm just kind of visiting one place one time to grab everything that I need and minimizing waste of motion, essentially and energy. I don't want to be running back and forth in a chaotic dance, wondering if I have certain ingredients, especially while I'm cooking. So next it is the spices. So the curry powder and garam masala. We keep them by each other, so that's perfect. And then the cumin, I believe is all the way up here. Got it. So you can either physically or mentally check off your list of all the ingredients and equipment that you need for your recipe. Since we looked ahead at the recipe, I know that I need a 12 inch nonstick pan and that is mostly it. I'm gonna need something to dump all of the food in. So these are the last few things we need to grab. So I got my equipment. Let's get a bowl to dump the food. And then I know I'm gonna need a spatula later, but we can always grab that by the stove. So everything is accounted for. We have everything we need to cook this recipe. I won't be running around the kitchen feeling all chaotic and stressed out, wondering if I have certain ingredients and looking for them because they are all here and we are good to go to cook the recipe. Before we dive into the next tip, I have a reminder for you. If you're finding these tips helpful and you're passionate about elevating your cooking skills, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Subscribing helps support the channel and keeps you updated on the latest content. Thanks again, and let's move on to tip number four. Okay, so tip number four is to break down and measure ingredients beforehand. So as you can see here, I have started breaking down some of the vegetables and measuring them out. So I broke down the potatoes and the cubes, a cup of the frozen peas, broke down that onion. And now I've started to measure out some of the spices. Since they're all going in together at once, I can combine them into one container. So this tip is really important because you wanna measure everything out and have it ready to go. Essentially grab and go for when you're cooking. A problem with a lot of home cooks is I see that they process their ingredients in the middle of cooking. Since it's home cooking, it's not a horrible thing, but why put yourself in stressful situations where you could potentially burn your food? Say your chicken is cooking or your beef is cooking on the stove and you're trying to chop up your potatoes while that's going, you know, you're just kind of, you're kind of creating a more stressful experience for yourself, which is super unnecessary. So measure everything out, your spices, your ingredients, break them down before you start cooking so that you can have a stress-free experience, grab and go, dump it into the pan and not worry about breaking down or measuring anything in between. Okay, tip number five is to clean as you go. As you see here, my prep station has kind of become a mess now that I've kind of broken down everything and measured things out. So clean as you go means to get rid of the things that you're no longer using to get clutter out of the way so that you can easily and clearly move on to the next task. So for example, I don't need this deli cup container anymore, These this lid. So might as well put it away in the sink. I don't need these spices anymore, so put them away back in the pantry. And if this were a restaurant kitchen, you would wanna put it back so that if someone else needed the ingredients, they would be able to find it and use it as well. Don't hog things that you're not using. Put it back in its home. Tomato paste in the fridge. Put the garlic back. need these things. So not only are we putting things back to where they belong, but also cleaning up our station to make sure that it's neat and tidy. So that means wiping down the board, making sure everything looks good, wiping down your equipment. And one thing that the pros will tell you is to keep everything at a 90 degree angle. It just like looks clean, gives you clean edges, and we don't need this anymore. 
So yeah, that feels a little bit better. Uh, things are out of the way. I know what I have and what I need to cook the rest of the recipe. Uh, I might not need these yet, but just in case I'll keep them there. And that's it. Tip number five, clean as you go. And tip number six is to label and date your food. So what you're going to need to do this is have some painter's tape and a marker. All right, so when you're done with your food and you need to pack it away in the fridge, say you're prepping to cook a meal in advance the day before or earlier, it's important to label and date your food. As I mentioned, you need painter's tape and a marker and a lid for your container. So yeah, these deli cups are really perfect for doing this kind of thing. You wanna make sure you're putting it in a clear container so it's easy to see what's inside, the contents, versus something that is kind of like metal or you don't know what's inside. This is just a professional chef kind of thing. Uh, when I was a younger chef, I would just kind of rip it off and then slap it on like that. And as you can see, kind of the edges are not very sharp and lined up which kind of, you know, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Uh, so it's not very pretty. I don't know where my scissors are right now, but I would have my chef yell at me to make sure I had clean edges. So if I don't have my scissor right now, you gotta be innovative. So kind of just cut it like this. There you go, you have your sharp edges. And then how we wanna label this is red onion and the date. I'm not quite sure what the date is. Let's just put 121. And you can also put the name of the dish as to what this prepped ingredient goes with as well. But what we wanna do is slap it on, just like that, so you can see it right there. Put the lid on top, and then say we're going to the fridge. Excuse my messy fridge, but the way you wanna put it is you want the label to be facing out so you can see clearly what that ingredient is and grab it when you need it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, check out my video here where I show you four knife tips to cut like a pro chef. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.